to our lead pastor and then Pastor Charles. Please, you, can we clap for them? Most of us here have never been to Kenya before, but by reason of they being together, they being friends, it's been extended to us, and then we have come to Kenya. We have a, uh, something, a presentation to make to our papa. We wanted to do it yesterday, but we couldn't do it. So with the kind permission, and then we want to ask you to come out. Oh, if you want to clap, you can clap. Reverend, please can you come and decorate <laughs> Papa for us? Mami Nelly, please can you come around? Okay, I think we're in the spirit. When um, Pastor Ken prophesied yesterday, so this is the inscription. In fact, in Ghana, this is our most expensive and most treasured attire. That's what they are wearing. This is called Kente. You know, it's a, one of our rich cultural dresses. And this is what we use to decorate very important people. This is how we show our appreciation to people we honor and revere. So to commemorate your consecration, we have the inscription, Bishop CMK. Then we have Mama Nelly. So, I'll ask the team to join me to decorate her. Can you give a shout unto the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, the song we are coming to sing is a special request from a lot of you. So we'll still do it again. Amen. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Lord of You are the King of Kings. You are the King. Your kingdom, your kingdom endure it forever. forever. You are the Lord. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King. You are the King of Kings. Lord, you're worthy Lord, of our you're praise. Worthy of all our praise. Enjoy it forever. 
And we want to bless his name. Amen. You're my healer. You're my keeper. You're my defender. My life saver. You are the living God, oh, 
Yes, and no one like you. You picked me from the miry clay, set my feet on the rock to stay. You my promoter, you my defender. You are the living God. Yes, Lord. Has I no one like you? Eku eme, eku eme. of time let me reserve all my complimentary remarks I will do them in the third service um, last year you know the focus was on prayer and I remember when I got to the airport one of GCI members accosted me and said pastor I'm in GCI I work at the airport she told me how she took some days off to participate in the event and she felt that God ministered to her. She came with a special need. And indeed, Pastor Charles, I would have missed my flight, actually. 
she just walked to me and I don't know what happened and decided to escort me. I don't know whether they had given the directive and I didn't get it. So she took my hand luggage and walked me straight um, to, the, to the plane and courtesy Pastor Ken and the wife, they upgraded my, my seat for me. I'm grateful, I remember. And um, so she, when I, this, then when Brother Godwin came, he called me and said, this lady has shared a testimony with G.O. and she's excited and that she was believing God for a child. Um, last year conference, God gave me a child and she named the child Tahila. Where is she? Is she around? And I, I'm thinking she came for the first service, probably. If she's not available, we are sorry. I'm sure probably the baby didn't permit her to stay. Baby in the third service, amen. Well, since we came, the Lord has been dealing with me on the subject. Initially, I struggled because I thought that at such conventions, people want to hear a certain line of message. And that the Lord kept pressing it on my heart. And I'm glad that I obeyed him. And I believe that moving to your next level, bringing forth into the nations, indeed you needed this message to keep you um, united and to take care of any skirmishes that the enemy may want to bring your way. And again, this sermon will help you not avail yourself to become a tool that the enemy may use to derail the upward progress that this church is making and therefore this morning I'm preaching on the topic how to perfect loyalty. Better still the importance of loyalty in organizational development. The importance of loyalty in organizational development. Father, I pray your blessing upon the preaching of your word. Enable me by your power and by your spirit even in Jesus name. Amen. Proverbs 20 verse number 6 is our foundation text. Proverbs 20 verse number 6. We'll read the NIV version. I would love all of us to read it together. If you are there, say glory to God. If you are struggling, say Lord help me. Can we go? Ready, go. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. Now, substitute the word faithful with the word loyal because the synonym for loyal is faithful. Is that okay? Can we take it again? Ready, go. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a loyal person who can find. For the last time. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a loyal person who can find. Now, King Solomon is simply saying that in these days, the most scarce commodity is loyalty. Loyalty is a scarce commodity. Many claim to be loyal, many claim to love, many claim to be committed, many claim to be to, 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 to have passion for something. But when their loyalty is put to a test, many are found wanting. In fact, one of the most important core values of the kingdom of God is loyalty. To the extent that in Matthew 25, the criteria that the master used to jack the servant whom he gave the talent was loyalty. Because the master said, thou good and loyal servant. Thou good and faithful servant. So, God did not ask us to be successful. He called us to be faithful. Success doesn't impress God. What impresses God is loyalty, faithfulness, dedication, commitment to the cause he's given to us. Now, the word loyal is defined as constant support for a cause, an idea, a philosophy, an institution, a leader, or a person. Allegiance to a cause. Some are loyal to a political party. And I'm sure in Kenya you have different political parties. You just had your election. And I'm sure uh, my, some of you are very loyal 
even if your political party presents a cat as candidate, you vote for the cat. Some are so loyal to a fault. When the party presents a lizard as the candidate, you will vote for the lizard. Why? Because you are loyal to that political tradition. We have them in Ghana, all over the place. So that is loyalty to a political party. Some are loyal to their tribe. Therefore, they will tell you, I will never marry from this tribe. I want to marry from my tribe. As whether it is good loyalty or not, we'll interrogate that later. Some are loyal to their profession. But for us Christians, we are called to be loyal to God. Exodus 20, Bible says, Thou shalt have no other God beside me or make any graven image. Romans 8.35, Paul says that we must be loyal to Jesus Christ to the extent that nothing should have the power to separate us from the love of God. By extension, we are called to be loyal to the church because the church represents God. You cannot claim to be loyal to God and be disloyal to the institution that represents Him on earth. And leading the church, representing God, is the pastor, the leader of the church on earth. We are called to be loyal to our leaders. So, in your office, you are supposed to be loyal to the institution, the leader of your company, the employer. In the family, the man is the head, and therefore, everybody must be loyal to the husband, to the father. I know some who are married and they are loyal to their father than their husband. Some are married and their brothers remote control their marriages. So when the husband gives instruction A, they have to run away with their brother. That's clear disloyalty. That is why in your marriage vows, you say, I will submit to you, I will honor you for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. I'm forsaking all others, cleave only unto you as long as we both shall live. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, this morning, I came to challenge you to be loyal. Now, to perfect loyalty, it is important that you, I help you identify the causes of this loyalty. Now, when you know them, then you can stay away from them. Now, this loyalty is like a cancer. It is a canker that destroys organizational cohesion. It destroys productivity. It divides institution. And God had his first share of this loyalty in heaven. When Lucifer in Isaiah 14 verse 12 rose up and deceived one third of the angels, he had a personal agenda. He wanted to become like God. And because of this loyalty, that is why we are suffering today. If Lucifer was loyal, there would be no Satan. That is why I hate this loyalty to a cause. If Lucifer was loyal, if he adhered to this preaching in heaven, you and I will not be here suffering. So this loyalty is evil. It is sin. It is wickedness. It has never helped any institution. It has never helped any individual who had availed him or herself to be disloyal. Hallelujah. Now, the first cause of this loyalty I want to talk about is ingratitude and forgetfulness. And I'm glad that the geo, by this action today, has made my first point very easy. As I said, that's a glory to God in the highest. Ingratitude. Lack of appreciation and forgetfulness has led many to become disloyal. How did I come at this conclusion? Let's go to Hebrews 6, verse number 10. Hebrews 6, verse number 10, the writer of Hebrews says, um, other versions says unrighteous, but since we are running with NIV, it says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work. And the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. So it means that it is unrighteous to forget. It is unrighteous. It is sin to forget. 
Now, do you know that Joseph languished in prison for two more years because of the negligence, because of the ingratitude, because of the forgetfulness of the cupbearer whose dream was interpreted by Joseph? Having assured him as soon as I walk out of prison, I will recommend you to the president so that when they are granted presidential pardon, they will consider you. He forgot of him. So the two years he spent in prison was needless. It's needless. God is loyal to us. What keeps God loyal to us is that God consciously tries to remember what you do for him. The day God will forget your offering, your tithing, your faithfulness, your commitment, your sacrifices, we are in trouble. The day God will forget, he will not give us his mercies anymore. The enemy will have a full day. Why do I say that forgetfulness makes us become disloyal? Let me caution you about the following when they happen in your life. Number one, when all is well, you can easily forget. Deuteronomy chapter 8 from 12 to 14. Moses cautioned Israel, when all is well, you can easily forget. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and your flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Hello? God doesn't work in isolation. God uses human beings. You are a wife because somebody proposed marriage to you. Somebody said no to all the women in Kenya. That's why you are a wife and you are a missus. Do you know that if Pastor Charles had not obeyed God and started GCI, all of us will not be here. Do you know that? If Mama Nelly had said no to this vision, if Mama Nelly had fought him and frustrated him, the healer will not be here. If Pastor Greg hadn't obeyed God to start global leadership training, I, I got to know him through global leadership training platform. If he had been comfortable and stayed in America and enjoyed his dollars, I wouldn't have met this man who will not be here today. The day you forget what God has done for you or the person God used to make you who you are today, you will start becoming ungrateful to the person. You will start misbehaving to the person. You will start becoming disloyal. Many of you, you are loyal in this age because now you are jobless. You are poor. Some of you, the day you get a good job, you will stop the search. I prophesy with my eyes open. Some of you, you are humble now because no man has proposed to you. If you get married and they wed you here. Ay, 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 ay. Some of you, you are singing here now because you are not popular. You are dancing here because you are not popular. If God's anointing should come on you, it should become a star suddenly in Kenya. We will see you once in three months in GCI. Even though we have to apply you have to, you ask us, how much are you paying me if I come and sing? In the church that nurtured your talent and gave you the platform to become a star. Some have stopped this church because they forgot what GCI did for them. They forgot. Maybe because of a little offense. They left. But they forgot. Some of you, you were drunks when you came here. Some of you were womanizers, but for this man's preaching, his teaching, his patience. Some of you, you didn't even know how to dress when you came here. You didn't know how to dress. 
You came and saw Pastor Charles wear a suit nice, and you started learning from him, and now you are a gentleman. Now you can wear a suit and a tie. Now you can, but for him, your wife would have bounced. You wouldn't have even accepted your proposal. Are you here? When you forget this man who blessed your marriage, who, when he appointed you as a leader, you didn't even believe in yourself. Yesterday at the consecration service, we saw how Bishop of Assemblies of Christ appointed him when he was general secretary at age 16. I'm sure he was confused at the time. He didn't even know what he was doing. But I'm glad this man has been loyal to Bishop. Honored him in this church. Brought him here yesterday. Look at the honor we accorded him. That is loyalty. That's loyalty. What Pastor Charles did this morning is loyalty even to the dead. He is honoring the, the, the son of the man who sustained his family. God honors loyalty. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Some of you. You came to GCI, you didn't even have a calling on your life. Pastor nurtured you, preached into your life. So very soon, you open a branch church, send it to a county, the church start growing. And then very soon, you start complaining that the gag, they sit in Nairobi and give foolish orders. Why are they asking us to bring 40%? And when I was struggling with my rent, they didn't mind me. So look, let's break away. Let's break away. Let's form our own international deliverance, prophetic, anointing, dancing, confusion, manipulative church. And you get a few confused members who don't know what they're about to follow you. Oh, even Lucifer had following. No, following doesn't mean that your calling is credible. Oh, people can follow foolish people. Go to Ghana. You have a lot of foolish prophets there. People are following them. So following, the devil took one third of God's church in heaven. One third. It didn't mean he was right. So the fact that a few confused people are clapping for you that break away doesn't mean that you, you, you mean what you are doing is of God. Don't forget when all is well, remember the vessel God used. Remember where he began from. Don't become ungrateful. Don't become ungrateful. Don't forget. Again, be careful, don't forget your humble beginning. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse number 15. Don't forget your humble beginning. So Moses says, remember that you were slaves in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. None of us came here the way we are. Yesterday we saw Pastor Charles' documentary, His Mustache Days. You can see a gap transformation and a change. It is called Ebenezer. Hello? None of us was born with a golden spoon in our mouth. God used an institution, a family. God used a leader at any given time to bring you from your low diva to the palace. The place of nothingness to the place of influence. Somebody recommended you. Look at John the Baptist. He came to prepare the way for Jesus. So Jesus honored John the Baptist. He honored him. Don't forget your humble beginnings. If you do, you will start becoming this lawyer. Number three, don't forget covenants, agreements. Deuteronomy 4, verse 23. Don't forget covenants, agreements. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol. Now, this is relevant. When you are, when you are given an appointment in any company, they give you terms of reference. You enter into a contractual agreement with the institution. If you decide to become a member of GCI or a pastor in GCI, there are terms and conditions. There is a constitution. I work with assemblies of God. We are not a perfect church. We have our own issues. We are still evolving. There are many things I disagree with in the Constitution, in our way of doing things. But then, 
as long as I decide to be in AOG, I'm obliged to be loyal to the terms, the conditions, or the constitutional provisions. You cannot accept an employment on these terms and come and start making other demands. And then especially when you are inside complaining, uh, bad-mouthing leadership, trying to incite rebellion, it is wrong. You must always stick to agreements, terms and conditions. The day you forget those things, you will start becoming disloyal. Don't forget the role the appointing authority played in, where, in getting you to where you are today. Ezekiel 28, 14 and 15. Don't forget the role the appointing authority played in getting you to where you are today. Can we read the scripture? It says, you were blameless in your way from the day you were created till I found wickedness in you. 14, no, I said 14 and 15. You were anointed as a guardian cherub. I didn't say cherub, one of them. For so I ordain you. So God was reminding Lucifer, I, I anointed you. I ordain you as an archangel. Are you here? Are you following what I'm saying? Those in the overflow, those in the upper terrace, are you here? Can you wave at me? Those outside, I feel God's power there. Can you wave at me? Good. Now look at me. God is reminding Lucifer. Suddenly, you become proud. Suddenly, you want to break away. Suddenly, you want to become like me. But I, Yahweh, I anointed you. I empowered you. I gave you the platform to do ministry in heaven. I made you glorious. I created you. The day you forget that somebody appointed you. The day you forget somebody gave you the platform to become what you are. You become disloyal. You become disloyal. Always remind yourself that you are who you are today because somebody gave you an appointment letter. Somebody gave you a job. Somebody recommended you. Somebody has kept you in the position where you are. The next thing that leads to disloyalty is pride. Somebody say pride. Look at Esther 1.15. Vashti. Vashti, the queen of Zerzes, who was the, 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 the king of a very vast empire from Kush to India. Because of time, I'll not be able to read all of them. He says, according to law, what must be done to Queen Vashti, he asked. She has not obeyed the command of the king Zerzes that the Enochs have taken to her. Now listen carefully. This king was so powerful, so affluent, that one day he organized 180 days to display his wealth and affluence. Organized a party for seven days. People were just eating and drinking. And then the wife, the queen, decided also to organize a special party for the woman. And she was a very beautiful woman. So when the party was going on, the king wanted to, to, to let the guests know how beautiful his wife was. So he sent a word and said, get Vashti to come so that I can present her. So let's say that the way Pastor Charles stood here and invited Mama Nelly. Guess what Vashti did? Vashti said, go and tell the king I will not come. Can you imagine Pastor Charles stands here and calls Mama Nelly and she sits there and said, can you, can you draw the face of Pastor Charles if I give you a pen and a paper? Can you imagine how embarrassed how confused, how disappointed, how his authority would have been undermined in GCI. Are you following that? That was what Vashti did. And that constitutes this loyalty. Why do I say so? Look at the following things. Number one, Vashti was defiant. She defied the order of the appointing authority who appointed her to be queen. The king. If there is no king, there is no queen. If there's no senior pastor, there's no associate. If there is no president, there is no vice. If there is no GO, there is no DGO. If there is no master, there is no missus. Mister, sorry. Are you here? So, Vashti had become proud. She became defiant, number two. She was stubborn. I'm sure they tried to persuade her, Madam, it is the king, your husband. Sit down and go. Go and tell him I will not go. What can he do? She was stubborn. 
So stubbornness, sticking to your guns, even when people are impl imploring you, even when you realize you are wrong, you are refusing to shift post so as to comply, it's disloyalty. Number three, she was disobedient. She disobeyed the, the orders of the king. Any form of disobedience is disloyalty. When you disobey the company's directive, the MD's directive, your boss's instruction, the GO's directive, the GAC's policy, if you disobey it, you have been loyal. If you disobey your husband, that is disloyalty. And no disloyalty is acceptable. There is no excuse for disloyalty. She tried to rub shoulders with the, with the king. Any attempt to rub shoulders with your leader, when you get to a place where you think that now you are also influential, you have support, you can also preach like G.O., you can, you can also, uh, what? You can also pastor a church, so you went to the village, the county, and you gathered some two or three, 25 people, and you've heard that when G.O. started, there were only three, and I started with 20. It means my anointing is greater than him. Give us only one year. First day, 20. By year one, thousand. Year two, five thousand. Very soon we'll overtake the, the central church. You wait. And we'll advise ourselves. She said no because she wanted to rub shoulders. She wanted to prove to the gathering that she and the husband are the same level. And so what? You can't order me about. You can't give me instruction. After all, you preach, I preach. You see vision, I see vision. What is it? Even Gio, even you cry, I have masters. You cry, you don't even have, you have only a degree. What is it? What is it? Even I prayed and the dead was raised in my village. She was in coma. She wasn't dead really, but she, she woke up. So what is it? I told you a story of one of our senior pastors in Ghana who is about to retire two years ago and he had told the associate pastor that when he goes, they'll give the check to him. He come and said, my son, I've regretted. I said, Papa, why? He said, I'm not even gone and the guy is already acting as if he's the senior pastor. I said, what has he done? He said, oh, he sits in my chair and then, you know, he goes around giving orders. You no. Know? beginning to exercise power that are yet to be conferred on him. He said, so I said, what will you do? He said, everything is here. I haven't left. I'm still there. Everything is here. Why do you allow your boss to start having funny thoughts about you? Why? When you disrespect authority of the leader, by Vasti's actions, she dishonored and embarrassed the leader publicly. Anything you do that will embarrass your boss, the leader publicly is disloyalty. I, I work at our headquarters in Ghana before I became a full-time pastor. And I know local pastors, when the executive presbytery sends directive to them, I know one pastor who just, in front of the church deacons, he just tore the letter and threw it into a trash can in the presence of the deacons. But you see, you know what he has done? You simply told your deacons that there is nothing wrong with disobeying authority. One of these days, they will do the same thing to you. It's like a wife. If you allow the children to insult daddy, because daddy, you have issues with daddy, you are telling the children that there is nothing wrong with insulting daddy, so the next to be insulted is the one. You are only to be, you are only the next time because I mean once they can insult daddy, who is mommy? Who is mommy? Are you here? So Vashti had embarrassed the leader publicly. She exhibited a show of mentality. Probably she wanted to show off. You know, there are some people when they see crowd, then they want to show off that they and the boss are the same. Have you seen that kind of people before? They said, come and give opening prayer. You are not the preacher man. Then you took the mic. 
Meanwhile, you know Gio is coming to preach after that. And then you spend 25 minutes praying, quoting scriptures, calling fire. What is that? Who, who are you trying to impress? What is it? When John the Baptist said that I might decrease, that he might increase. Lawyer people abase themselves. They project the leader because Christ said, if I am exalted, I will draw men. When you exalt the leader, he will also exalt you. Listen, your duty is to let your leader look good. Your duty is to cover your leader. You become bad and let your leader look good. That is the essence of loyalty. Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 4, 27 to 33. I will not read that because of time. But let's read a few of the verses. Daniel 4, 27 to 33. Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Some spiritual men were advising King Nebuchadnezzar. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that then your prosperity will continue. Let's see whether Nebuchadnezzar heeded the advice. Next. Therefore, O king, all this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, Is this not the great empire I've built for myself? Are you here? When he was giving spiritual advice, when spiritual men advised him, he rejected it. And rather went on the boasting and the bragging spree. When they, they said, Oh king, humble yourself. Renounce your sins. Many of you, it gets to a time you think you know more than your pastor. Do you know how hard people come to my office? I can clearly see that they didn't come to seek my wisdom. They have made up their mind already. They came and talked, baby, 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 baby. When they start advising, then they start challenging you. Then I ask myself, I ask them, so why did you come? I said, would you shut up and listen to me? If you know what to do, then please walk out. I've done that before. Oh, oh sorry, Pastor. I said, yes, yeah, shut up and let me talk to you. Shut up and let me speak to you. If you know what to do, why have you come to waste my time? Anytime you feel you know more than your spiritual leader, and you cannot be humble enough to accept advice, from your spiritual leader or your boss or your husband, you are becoming disloyal. And indeed, what was the end of King Nebuchadnezzar? If you read on, God turned him into an animal. He was in the bush for 12 months. Grew claws, his body grew, what? Hair, like an animal. That is what this loyalty can destroy a great person. King Nebuchadnezzar Refused to honor and acknowledge the source of his power, promotion, and wealth. Verse 30. He was bragging and saying that, he said, Is not this the great Babylon I have built as a royal residence? Look, when you come to a place where you think that you are self-made. Oh, before I came to GC, I was born again already. Oh, I could even pray already before I came. Oh, before I came to GC, I... Uh, no, everything was good, I will make it. So what is it? You know, there are some Christians like that. Oh, Kenya, you are, you are very good Christians in Kenya. Oh, yeah. King Nebuchadnezzar did not acknowledge the source of the person who made him who he is today. The same applies in our natural realm. The day you begin to sound as if nobody mentored you, Nobody led you to Christ. Do you know according to 1 Corinthians 9, he says that all of you here are the work of this man. Paul said this. He said, you believers, those in Corinth, you are the work of my hands. Do you know this man's prayer covers you? I'm telling you. The day you forget or you fail to acknowledge 
the source of who you are and what whom are the, the ones God used to bring to where you are, you are clearly showing this loyalty. Belshazzar, Daniel 5, 2 and 3. He acted ultra virus. What did he do? He had gone to defeat Israel and he organized a party and they were drinking and boozing. He ordered that the holy cups in the temple of God should be brought for them to drink wine with it. Are you here? Come on, if you, are, if you are alive, wave at me. If you are alive, check if your neighbor is waving at me. If you are sleeping, it's disloyalty. Mm. Hello? Those in never flow. If you are on WhatsApp, if you are, if you are on Facebook, it's disloyalty. Whilst I'm preaching. <laughs> now look here. This man was a heathen. Belshazzar was drinking his wine. He gave orders to bring the gold and the silver goblets. Then the book of Nazar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. Listen, you must know your limit. Anytime you exceed your limit, you're becoming disloyal. Are you here? Are you here? Why did God reject Saul? He said, I was waiting. The people were putting pressure. So I offer sacrifice. Kings don't offer sacrifice. Oh, in our assemblies of God in Ghana, we have three levels of pastors. When you complete Bible school, you start with exhorter. Exhorter, you can't baptize. You can't serve communion. You can't bless marriages. So the district pastor or whoever must come and perform those duties. After three years, you write exams. The yeah, says if you pass, then we upgrade you to become licentiate. Licentiate, you can baptize. But you can't serve communion. You can't bless marriages. Then after another two years, that's five years after uh, um, graduation, you, they will, will now ordain, you can, you can now use the title reverend. You can bless marriage, serve communion, and perform certain uh, ministerial responsibilities. Are you here? So if an exhorter tries to perform duties that he's not empowered to do, just yes, because, oh, God called all of us. And some do that. Some do that. Some do that. When you begin to act outside your powers, clearly you are being disloyal. Rehoboam, 1 Kings 12, 12 and 13. This man became king. When he became king, he went to the elders and they advised him and said, look, if you are going to become successful, humble yourself, serve the people. Don't be like your father who imposed taxes on the people and was hard on them. After the elders advised him, he went ahead and gathered his classmates, his age mates and friends. And they said, they offered a contrary advice. They don't mind the old men. They have lost vision. Oh, don't follow them. Rather be tough on the people. Impose taxes. Be hard on them. And Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the constituted elders and followed the youth. Listen, anytime you disobey the first chair leader, to obey the second chair leader is disloyalty. Oh, pastor, but uh, he led me to Christ. Oh, pastor, we were classmates. And so what? Look, even if Pastor Simon, Pastor Simon is a good man. Amen. Even if Pastor Simon led you to Christ, the day you enter here, this man becomes your pastor. You don't know all allegiance to him. It's to this man. Are you here? Get it clearly. So, this Rehoboam had no business going to the youth who didn't appoint him. It was the elders. When there is a vacancy as a king, it's the elders who do what? Who enthrone you. Some of you, you reject, you come to Pastor Simon for advice. When Pastor Charles is not there, then you go and you meet a prophet in town. Then the prophet gives you a contrary advice. Then you reject the advice of your pastor and then go and do the beatings of another prophet. That is this loyalty. I know some of my members who suffered dearly for it. A prophet came to my church and he went behind me and took monies from my members. I didn't know. 
a member carried five thousand dollars and gave to the prophet. Number two, the brother came to me and said, Pastor, I have seen some money in my bank accounts. I said, Hey, don't try to give testimony out of it. Wait. Go and tell your bankers there's a strange money in my account. Apparently, he didn't like my advice and went to the prophet whom I had invited to my church. And the prophet said, oh, he prayed. The Lord said it's for him. He should use it and he should bring a seed. And he took a heavy amount, it was heavy money, and gave it to the prophet. One day I was there and they said, the police have arrested a member of mine. What is it? To cut a long story short, he came crying. I said, you're crying. Go. I won't bail you. Go. Thank God, pastors cannot even bail. Yes. You see, the prophet had to cop the money because, hey, when the thing went to the police station, they had to call him. Already, that guy, I made the mistake in even inviting him. The Lord kept telling me, don't bring this guy, another pastor friend from somewhere, you know, so yes, 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 I liked my lesson. Now my eyes have teared. My eyes are open. Are you with me? I'm your pastor. I told you, don't take the money. And then another prophet, just because he came and described the color of your pants and told you that you ate king king in the morning and you ate uh, what chapati and the you are so excited. Who tells that? Who tells that? Who tells you? Who tells you that the devil doesn't see? The devil sees. We have witch doctors and diviners. They see things it's just because somebody saw. The, what is it? What is it? And you disregarded my counsel as your pastor. I said, brother, like the angel told Paul. As for the vessel, you will lose it, but no life will be lost. You will face the law. You will suffer proper. But God will save you at the end. So next time, when your pastor advises you, you will remember what you went through. Don't reject spiritual counsel. Korah, number 16. I'm almost done. Number 16. Let's read from verse 1. This scripture, Pastor Charles, ministered to me last night. I had read the scripture. I had to do some personal repentances. I didn't know that there are things we do that means so much to God. Look here. Korah, the son of, let's ignore, okay, it's okay. Korah, son of Isa, the son of Kohath. Now look at the B part. Became insolent to who? The next verse. And rose up against Moses. Where then were 250 Israelite men, well-known community leaders, who had been appointed members of the council. Who appointed them? Who? Moses. Now, these guys became rude to Moses. Their leader, their first chair leader, the appointing authority, the man who saved them from slavery from Egypt, the man who missed Canaan because of them. They rose up and they were able to mobilize 250 leaders. Maybe some of them were get members. Sorry, oh. That's my mouth. Some of them were choir leaders. I'm sure some of them were what? Branch pastors. Chow boy. Hey, hey, hey. You have to speak out. The way things are, but if you don't speak out, the way Gino is going, the way the MD is going, hey, hey, come on, hey, Chow boy, Chow boy, let's do something. Let's do something. And they were talking carelessly. Rose up against Moses. They go to the next verse. Look at verse 3. They came as a group to oppose Moses and Aaron. Never join a group to oppose your leader. Go one-on-one -on -one and talk to the leader and go alone. Go inside alone and walk out alone. Never join a group. Right. When I was school prefect in secondary school, you know those days, the SRC president and the school prefect, I don't know now, uh, there's always power contention. Who, who is powerful? So because I was school prefect and the SRC president was taller than me, he said, oh, he wanted to show that uh, SP is weak. 
Eh? You know, those if you don't do, if you don't organize a Luther, then you are not a strong student's leader. And I was SU president, you know, I was a preacher. So I felt I must do something. So one day they came, about 20 of us, let's go to the headmaster's office. The headmaster is slapping people, he's intimidating us. So I said, okay, let's go. We we're 20. From the dining hall to the headmaster's office. So we we're going. When we got to the administration block, I'm sure the Holy Ghost said, 10 and C. The number had reduced to five. <laughs> the S acid president was nowhere to be found. I said, brethren, the meeting has ended. Everybody find your level. Me, I will not go. They form a group and they went to Moses. See, I mean, now, look at their contention quickly. They said, they were telling Moses, you've gone too far. Can you imagine uh, what? Um, your son. Austin coming to tell daddy, daddy sit down. Yeah, and uh, what? Joy and daddy, you are going too far these days. What? You, at least when I came here 10 years ago, I saw Austin. Austin, small boy, wish that daddy put him in the car and send him to, 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 to what? To, to school. How dare you talk to your father? Can you talk to your CEO like that? So if you cannot do that, why do you in church, why do you have the audacity to talk to your spiritual leader? How many, if you do this in a company, will you survive? Mama Rachel, if you do this to your CEO, will any worker survive? But why when it comes to church, Pastor Sam Salmon, we think that, oh, we have for church, we have what? The liberty. You can't do this. Mama Nelly, well, can you do this in the, in the corporate world? You can't do that. So why can you do it in church? There's something wrong with us. He says, you've gone too far. Now tell me, when it comes to medicine, you can say somebody has gone too far, but in spiritual matters, who determines what is too far? <laughs> now tell me, when it comes to church, can a member determine something? Oh, uh, look, I'm not saying that, I'm not gagging you, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying you can't criticize. But the tandem of which they were going is what I have a problem. He says that the whole community is holy. How can he say that everybody is holy? Everybody is not holy here. Somebody, before he came last night, went to sleep with somebody's wife. Out of 3,000, somebody here, you took bribe yesterday. Out of this, I'm sure somebody, so how can he say everybody is holy? All of us are spiritual. All of us pray. It's not true. So clearly, they were lying. They had, a, 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 the Lord is what? With them. Why then do you set yourself above the Lord's assembly? It was, most, it was the Lord who set him above. So you are questioning God who had elevated him as a G.O. Let's read on. Quickly. When Moses heard this, he fell face down. That is the dangerous part. When you post a spiritual leader, he doesn't talk. I have wept in my bedroom many times. When we enter our bedroom and we put our face down and we weep, it's not good for you. I've seen many people suffer. He went inside and wept because they were baseless. They, were, they, they had no basis. Meanwhile, they were the loud talking. You see, Pastor Jack, sometimes the leader, you cannot talk. See, by the time issues come up, they would have said all kinds of things. And you, the leader, you, because if you talk, there'll be confusion. And because you don't talk, people think that you are guilty. Let's read on. Quickly, five. Then he said to Korah and all his followers, a long story. Eventually, the earth opened and swallowed. Moses said, you spoke against me? To prove to you that all is not holy. For being insolent, rude, rebelling. And then Moses said, bring senses. That was a trap. The senses, it was only the priest who put fire in the censer. When Moses suggested that, they foolishly also went to bring censer. And what happened? All of them perish. Brethren, God doesn't listen to every prayer. Oh. Look, do you know that? But look at Sarah. Is it no, no? Uh, what is the name? Hannah. Hannah. Even 
when Eli was not spiritual, his prophetic word gave her a child. So don't joke. Don't joke. There are some voices in heaven, God respect them. They don't scream. They don't do, what is it? But, a simple word from you, the Lord is with you. Will take your 40 days fast to answer that prayer. Don't oppose. When we oppose, when we are insolent and rebellion, clearly we are on the path of this loyalty. When you accuse the leader falsely, when you accept authority, when you convert spiritual, please permit me to read verse 8. That one is very critical, please. Let's do that quickly. Verse 8. Moses said to Korah, now listen, you Levites, this is the place I love most. Isn't it enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the Israelite community and brought you near himself to work at the Lord's tabernacle and to stand before the community and to minister to them? He has brought you and all your fellow Levites near himself. But now you are trying to get the priesthood too. So because Pastor Charles made you preach one Sunday and the members clap. Now you are angry that how come six months? He has not asked me to preach again. Hey! I mean, can you uh, like, like wives? You decide to be, maybe, maybe decide to become romantic a little and then you went and washed the dishes for your wife. The next time she has frowned her face. Sweetheart, what is it? Nothing. Oh, sweetheart. Didn't you see the bulls? Hey. I just came to show small love. Small love and I just came and now you want to turn it to my beauty? Hey. hey. <laughs> so, these Levites, they were ordinary leaders. Now they want to convert the priesthood. Listen, Miriam made that mistake. When she and Aaron spoke against Moses, when judgment came, God didn't touch Aaron no, because Moses and Aaron were at the same level. There are some things that are beyond you, even pastors. It is not everything that as a man of God, you have the power and the authority to do. Mark 16, 21 to 23. When you try to correct the leader, especially over spiritual matters, when it's about money, you can talk. I tell my deacons, uh, at board meeting, when we're discussing the finances, oh, that one, I don't restrain you because most of them are bankers. I'm not a banker. So some of them are auditors. So when it comes to those things, administration, you can talk. When it comes to spiritual matters, I warn them, hey, I for spiritual matters, just as you are an authority in banking, me to my area is theology. When you go to bank, I'm praying. Don't go to and work in the bank eight hours. You didn't pray the whole day. You prayed two minutes. I was in the bedroom praying. I saw things. And you want to come and tell me how to do spiritual matters? No way. No way. Everybody of your expertise. <laughs> ah. I want to make sense. I want to make sense. The Bible said Jesus, before he went to the cross, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that you must go to Jerusalem and suffer. Look at the next verse. Let's see a disciple who thought he was showing love to Jesus. But he, 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 he exceeded his mandate. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord. Never, Lord. How can you say you die? Don't say that. Are you getting it? See the response of Jesus. The next verse. Jesus turned and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. So, members can become Satan. The kings can become Satan. Oh, yeah. Even pastors can become Satan. I don't see anything wrong with what Peter did. Peter was showing love. So sometimes your good intentions may not necessarily mean that it is right. So don't push beyond a certain limit. 
You say one, two. The man says, or the one says, leave it and let God judge him. The last but one. Familiarity. Mark chapter 2. Do you know that Christ couldn't perform a miracle when he went to his hometown? Why? Because Mark 6, 3 to 4. They were so familiar with Jesus. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And this is sisters here with us. And they took offense at him. One time I told my wife something. Initially she didn't understand, but she came to later on appreciate what I said. It wasn't even that she was being rebellious. We were having a friendly chat. I said, my wife, I pray for you. I said, you have a very difficult task. I am your pastor and your husband. You must know where to draw the line. Don't always think I'm a husband. So if you always think as a husband, you will be better against your pastor. Hey. He said, oh, explain. I said, explain. Of course, it's true. I was joking, but it was true. It was true. It was true. I am your husband. I for members. I'm only their pastor. So they relate to me at pastoral level. But as for you, we're in the same room. We're in the same bedroom. Ah. We do all the kinds of things together. If you are not careful, become too familiar. I cease to be your pastor. Be careful you don't become too familiar with the Jew. Those here, don't become too familiar with your resident pastor. The last one, then I'm done. Forgive me for taking too much of your time. But God brought me here. You see, yesterday was Jesus' consecration. That is why this message is crucial for your next level. The final one. Deception. Isaiah 14 verse 12. I have encountered people who regretted being this lawyer. He said, Pastor, I was misled. I didn't know. That is why they said that there are two sides to every story. Never listen to one side of a story and pass judgment, especially if it has to do with your leader, your boss. Is that okay? Normally, people come and tell the side of the story that suits them. So, if let's say somebody can say, Hey, Pastor Charles did this. How can he do this? Has the general boss here? He didn't consult it. He did this. This, that, yeah, yeah. And then you don't come and listen to his side of the story. Obviously, those who are complaining, they will not say the good things he said. They want to be, I mean, they want to look good. So you listen to them and then you start becoming disloyal to him. It gives instruction and you don't want to take it. You think he has deviated. So you see, you are becoming disloyal because you have been deceived. Look at the one third of the angels who followed Lucifer. I don't think Lucifer told them that he's fighting the cause because he wanted to become God. I'm sure he was telling them that you cry. If you become an archangel, it's not fine. If I become God, there are only three archangels. Look at these millions of angels here. When I become God, I will create more archangel position. Hey! So, he vote for me when I become president. Every morning, all of you here, every morning, you, 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 I'll do what? Every morning, hey! Continental breakfast for every home. Hey! Free Mandazi. Hey, everybody. I don't think Lucifer made them aware of his personal evil intention. So when people are hurt, be very careful. They try to recruit other people and they will always project themselves as being right. They are more concerned. So when people start complaining to you about an organization, be very, very careful. Find out the other side. Find out the other, especially if it has to do with your boss, I'm insisting, or management decision. Find out or else you'll be deceived to become
becoming disloyal. Stand to your feet and let's pray. Thank you for your patience. Very sorry. I told those who were here during the week, I preached this sermon in my church last week and the lady walked to me and said, Pastor, I received my promotion. She said, I was bitter in my company. I had withdrawn my, my loyalty. I wasn't supporting. I wasn't loyal to my boss. When I heard you teach from day one, I started changing. He said, my boss asked me, suddenly what has happened to you? And here's my appointment letter. Long awaited promotion. She showed me the letter. Some others came to me and said, Pastor, if I'd heard these teachings years ago, I wouldn't have lost my first job. He said, I thought because I was bitter and I was right, I was misbehaving in the company. So these things are not only relevant for GCI in the home. Some of you, I'm sure, some of you lost your first marriage. Probably if you had known these things, you will agree that you wouldn't have lost your first marriage. Lift your two hands. All of us are guilty in one way or the other. Tell the Lord you are sorry. If you can identify yourself with any of the things I mentioned. Some of you, you would have gone further, but because of this loyalty. Some of you, there's a curse hanging around you. Your career, your ministry, your job. Because you were disloyal along the line. Lift your voice and cry to God right now. Be bold to confess it. Don't pretend it. All of us are guilty one way or the other. This loyal to God, this loyal to Jesus, this loyal to the G.O., this loyal to your boss, this loyal to your husband. Lift your voice and cry to God. Lord, have mercy upon me. Forgive my disloyalty to my leaders, O oh God. This loyalty to my flock.